Hi everyone, this is Grace, and today I'll be walking you through how I made this adorable little puppy set. Let's go. All right, first up we have the puppy, of course. So that is edible marker that's sketched on there, and I don't know, I didn't film it because I actually used the projector to project on the sketching just because I tried I tried freehanding it and honestly the proportions of the poor puppy just did not look good and I don't know I didn't want to start this off with a projector lighting situation so here we are <clears throat> excuse me frog in my throat so I do recommend sketching out the sections of the puppy you can totally freehand it but um I do recommend sketching. So I made this set for a beginner class and with all of my beginner classes, I always try to just use one consistency for the entire class. It's a fun challenge for me to come up with a set that can handle that, but also I do it for you. <laughs> I do it for the people because I know that the more consistencies the more overwhelming and intimidating it can be. So typically, I think that I was just thinking thus far, all of my one consistency sets have been with just a thick flood and this is no different. So I outlined and flooded the ears. Now I let that dry to the point where the icing is is totally smooth to the touch and can withstand a little bit of pressure because obviously right here I'm applying pressure in what I call the bear technique and whenever I'm doing something like the bear technique I do like to be able to do that before adding in sections next to it so that's why I did the ears first and I'm doing this bear technique because you see on the edges, I can be really messy about it because that's just going to get covered up by the icing next to it. But if you do all of the flooding first, <clears throat> excuse me, and then you add in um, the bear technique, it's not impossible. It just makes the seam much more challenging. And I've had many moments where I've accidentally um, <laughs> uh, flooded next to it. Um, and not flooded, like gotten a little bit of the bear technique on it. And I'm like, ugh, sad face. But anyway, the only downside to doing it this way is that you have to wait long enough for the sections that need the bear technique to dry enough so that you can apply pressure. I cannot tell you how many times I've actually put a dent in the icing because I didn't wait long enough. <sighs> oh, well, it happens. Um, I would say it's like at least 30 to 60 minutes at least, and it depends on the environment you're working in. So just keep that in mind. Um, you don't need to let the bear technique part dry before, before moving on to this next section, obviously, because you can tell I didn't let it dry um, because it's still shiny. Now, the bear technique, in my opinion, <laughs> achieves two things. One, it gives it texture, which is nice to have that variation of texture. But also, since you're using a really thin layer, um, it's going to dry pretty much immediately on its own. And since it dries so fast, it always dries matte, which ends up looking different than the icing that you just flood normally. And you'll see this at the end because um, the ear is going to stand out from the face, which I didn't, I'm not going to do the bear technique on. Um, and in something like this, where we're using a limited color palette, it's nice to have some visual variation um, of the colors. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I was just thinking if you watch the strawberry lemonade video, um, wait, did I post that yet? Yes, I did. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow, brain fart. Um, I did the same thing there with the the strawberry basket. Um, again, not a lot of colors in that set, but I wanted to provide some uh, texture, but also some extra variation on the colors. 
So it's not a different color, but it just looks a little different. So you'll be able to see that best at the end with this cute little puppy. Um, this set was inspired by my parents' puppy. They have an English Springer Spaniel. He is so adorable. And that was the inspiration for this because English Springers um, tend to have this kind of marking on their faces. Not all of them, but a lot of them do. Um, the eyes here are the PME Black Pearls in I think four millimeters. I think they come in four and seven. This is the smaller size. Do not, under any circumstance, <laughs> use the Wilton Black Pearls. They will bleed into your icing and you will cry and you'll be sad because <laughs> you're not going to know until the morning after. Um, the only Black Pearls I use are the PME. They do not bleed. They're amazing. Highly recommend. Uh, so I let the face crust and then I just put the little cute little nose and cute little tongue sticking out. And that's it. So you can see the ears look a little bit lighter. Isn't that cool? I think it's very cool. <laughs> okay. So next up, we have the food bowl. And again, I'm just sketching out the different sections of this um, using an edible marker. Doesn't matter what color you're using. I just like to use a color that kind of goes with the set. So this is brown. Um, speaking of the colors of this set. So we have brown, pink, uh, blue and white. And this blue here, I didn't want it to be like baby pink and baby blue. So obviously the pink is kind of a baby pink. Um, but this blue has a tiny, tiny touch of yellow in it just to make it not a pure blue. And I really like that variation. Um, yeah. <laughs> so if you are going to make this yourself though, you could certainly use any, like I would definitely do white and brown, but then for the pink and the blue, you could use any two colors you want. You could use orange and purple or I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, this here is a version of a wet on wet where we're doing like a wet section next to a wet section as opposed to, um, like flooding the whole thing and then putting another layer on top of it. I felt like I had something else to say, but <laughs> I just, I just zoned out. Um, these cookies are, some of these are smaller than they look like that. The, um, the puppy is, I think three and a half inches, but this one it's probably only two and a half, maybe. Um, not that big. It looks big on the screen, obviously. <sighs> it's important here to work as fast as you can. Um, cause you want to make sure you catch each section while they're still wet. So you can have them marry together nicely like they've done here. Uh, let that crust. And then, so here's the trick. <laughs> To doing this kind of um, like layered texture kind of thing like this is the kibbles um, when you're using a consistency that's too thin because if we just did all of these dots all in one go they might look separate for a hot second but then they're just going to melt into each other which is kind of sad <laughs> um, so the key here is to do one layer at a time and let those crust so you don't want to ideally have any um kibbles that are touching you can see some of mine did because I was kind of impatient um also adding like another layer on top so I can kind of cover any of those spots that melted together like right there and I think I did three layers ultimately with this so that's the key we we managed to get away with a thick flood here to do these dots um and that's the key there to let them dry in layers. So next up we have the paw print, which in the world of cookies is actually quite common. And there's a key here. So key to success, I should say. Um, I think pretty much everyone that that does a paw print or most people do the two layer print, which is what I'm going to be doing. So you flood the first layer and then you do the paw pads as a second layer. And the key to help them not 
crater is to do them to do the second layer when the first layer has just barely crusted don't ask me the science behind it because I don't actually know I just know <laughs> that that's how it works best but you are gonna see um, I think I waited too long to do this and you'll see the big pad is going to crater a little bit sad face but at least I get to show you what a crater looks like right <laughs> Okay. Ugh, so satisfying. So I'm just basically like flooding the smaller pads instead of outlining and flooding. I just think that's the easier way to do it. <clears throat> and you know, if I wasn't trying to use one consistency here, I would probably use, oh, you can see a little crater on the big pad. Um, I would probably have used a soft peak, at least for the smaller pads. And then like, outlined and flooded um with a squiggle for the big pad but again challenging myself here to just use one consistency um this squiggle here is again the thick flood and i'm using this tool called the thingamajini by the cookie countess um but you can really use any flat tool like a kitchen knife just to spread the icing i used to do that with a paintbrush and found that the paintbrush created too thin coverage of icing, um, especially when you're using a flood consistency to do that kind of technique, it can be too thin. So I didn't want something too thin. <laughs> um, and I accidentally discovered this on live <laughs> on an online class um, that using a tool like this is actually better. So yay. Uh, you wanna let that crust that first white layer which won't take very long because it's so thin and then we're going over here with um again a thick flood doing this cutout when you're doing a cutout with only a flood consistency first of all i would not do it with anything thinner than a thick flood and you always want to do <clears throat> the cutout outline first and also do your cutout a little bit bigger than you ultimately want because it is going to um, uh, close up a little bit because it is a flood. You can see here, I could tell that I'd already, I could already tell that I'd put too much icing and it was going to flood over. So that's just a really easy hack there um, to use your scribe to pull off any excess icing. But obviously you can only do that when the icing is still wet. If it has started to crust, it will really mess up the border of your icing. Just doing a simple little wet on wet line situation here. Gotta love this. And sometimes it needs a little bit of help to settle, which I'm using my smallest scribe here, which, which is my preference for something like this. And I'm just jiggling the surface of the icing. That's it. Jiggle, jiggle. It rolls. Doo, 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 doo. Really, I need to learn that song so I can <laughs> properly sing the lyrics. Um, we're going to let that crust. Actually, not just crust. Like, um, crust to the same point of the bear technique so it's totally smooth. Because we're doing, we're going to cover this uh, roof in sprinkles. Now, again, this is one of those things where it's my preferred order to do it. Because I think it has the best seam and everything. And if you're concerned about that then do it in this order. But the downside to this is that it can kind of take longer because you have to wait until the house has dried enough to be able to do this next section. Um, sorry, drink of water. <laughs> because if you, if your house is not dry enough when you're putting the sprinkles on top, it's going to stick to the house and it's also going to be a sad day. So, <laughs> Um, if you don't want to do it in this order, if you want to do something faster, you can do the roof first and then immediately, um, or I mean, do the cutout, <clears throat> let that dry, then do the roof and then the house. I'm just using a brush here to brush away any excess sprinkles. And, uh, there we go. I believe we have just two cookies left. Um, yes, this is a poop cookie. And I know that. <laughs> That I've offended some people <laughs> with my poop cookie. Come on, y'all. There's a poop emoji. Um, and I, you know, I like to have a sense of humor. I like to have fun. And when I was coming up with designing this set, um, I did co-design all of the cutters with Amanda from Night Owl Icing, which is where the cutters are from. 
<clears throat> and I was thinking about what designs to do and I was like, I have to do a poop. Come on. It's a puppy set. Like dogs poop, humans poop, everyone poops. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that reminds me of the book. Isn't there a book, a children's book called every, everyone poops or something like that? Um, it's true. It's true. So what are we doing now? Great question, Grace. Great question. Uh, we are flooding in sections. So this is a really simple cookie, simple effect here. And we're doing alternating sections, letting them crust. I was just thinking to myself, I kind of wonder if I, had, I if I should have done the middle section first. I don't think it really matters. Um, but if I did this over again, I might do the middle section first. Yeah. That, I don't know. Why would I do the middle section first? Um, because the middle section is just one beautiful continuous like shape. And I might have gotten a better line on it if I had done it. I don't know. It really doesn't matter. I'm just nitpicking here. All right. So we let that suckeroo crust. And then I'm going in and I'm just flooding next to the sections, which is my preferred way um, to do flooding in sections. Uh, the alternative is you could do like an outline line of icing next to the section, but I think the best seam is achieved this way. And there we go. <laughs> There's our cute little boop. That's like a two and a half inch cookie. It's a pretty small cookie. Pretty adorable. All right, we are moving on to the dog bone. So this is just a really simple design, but you know me, I love simple, effective designs. So we're gonna cover this in sprinkles, which means I am not flooding all the way to the edge. You can see here I'm leaving like a solid two millimeters on the edge of the cookie. That's because when we cover this in sprinkles, the sprinkles are going to weigh down the icing and it's just naturally going to spread out. So this will end up covering the whole cookie <clears throat> when, once I apply the sprinkles. Um, but until then, uh, yeah, I, I learned this the hard way many, many times, too many times. It was like, at some point, Grace, you're going to have to learn, uh, <laughs> which I did. So I think, do I, yep, I don't do anything else. Okay, there we go. That is the dog bone and that is the whole set. Aww. I'm going to see this cutie patootie next week and I cannot wait. He is such a sweetheart. <sighs> That's it. That's it. As always, hope I, 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 wow, talking today. I hope you learned a thing or two. I hope you try this yourself and I hope you have a great day. Have a sweet one, y'all. Love you. Bye.